So this is the, a mock-up of what is going to be our next project, which is a two-pot thermal cooker, which is also called a hay box or a retained heat cooker. Um, there's some really good videos uh, already on YouTube about retained heat cookers. I really like uh, Gatan Productions video um, for a single pot cooker. We already have a hay box thermal cooker that I built to use with this large stock pot. And I really do like it, especially with that large stock pot for making large amounts of uh, soup stock and bone broth. You can cook the stock for really long periods of time on just the retained heat. But I wanted to have a more attractive hay box for one thing. Our, the first one I made was overly large and extremely ugly and uh, just not didn't really fit in our living space very well. Whereas this one is uh, gonna be like an attractive piece of furniture, I hope. And it will also have, be more versatile because we can also do smaller uh, recipes in this smaller normal stock pot. This is like a, uh, I think it's like a 20 quart stock pot that we got at a restaurant supply place. And this is like just your normal, you know, homeowner stock pot. So then the exterior of the box is essentially going to be a sort of a reproduction of like a colonial style six board chest with um, hand forged hardware and a nailed together six board chest. And I got the idea for doing that from DF in the shops uh, video series about making a six board chest toolbox. Um, so this is gonna be more of like a six board chest, like blanket chest type of a chest. But um, I just really am very clearly directly inspired for you know the box and the hardware is going to be just very directly inspired by df in the shops videos um with a few minor changes but it, it uh the interior is going to be the insulated thermal cooker and uh but it should make it just a nice attractive piece of furniture for us and um be a really useful addition to homestead cooking. I'd like to have more versatility with what we can do with the thermal cooker in the, in the house right near the kitchen and then be able to do, I want to experiment with, you know, doing like certain different, you know, warm ferments like yogurt and koji. And also I'd like to see if you could maybe use one of these for doing sort of like a lower tech sous vide type of a cooking style um so that's really exciting i have a lot of ideas for ways we could use this more once we have you know this you know more compact and attractive thermal cooker so yeah so basically what it's going to look like more or less is it'll have the two pots in this configuration and then I probably will be blocking off the corners and just using those as like dead airspace. And then surrounding the pots, there's gonna be about two inches of uh, rigidized perlite that I'm going to uh, bind. The perlite is gonna be bound with um, some sodium silicate to make, and then that will be lined with aluminum foil. And then the rest of the extra space outside of that two inches, I'll probably just pack with um, either just dead air behind the little brackets or uh, styrofoam kind of filling in this extra space underneath this smaller pot. And they'll probably sit a little bit lower inside the box than this. This is just, you know, sort of to give you a general idea. So the long sides will have a rabbit that will receive the end of the short sides and then that'll be nailed together um, 
in a in the style of the traditional six board chest. Then we'll have a lid. And sort of still in the process of making the hardware, but the hardware is inspired by kind of traditional Pennsylvania Dutch uh, decorative motifs, like the tulip finials and then this heart motif. Um, and so on the front, I'm gonna have this hasp and there's gonna be, this hook is gonna be riveted to the hasp and then there'll be an escutcheon plate here with a staple that will engage. So I have to cut a slot for the staple, rivet this, and then obviously all my hinges, I need to cut the knuckles and pin them together. And then I'm also gonna make um, some handles with escutcheon plates that'll go on both ends of the short sides. So that's what it will basically be. So I still have a lot of work to go, but I'm probably be making, oh, and then everything will be, and everything will be sort of, the box will be nailed together and the hardware will be attached with um, the hand forged nails, which I've been making also using uh, DF in the shops PDFs on uh, nail header making so he's got a lot of good information on his channel um, So yeah, and the next steps are to put the box together nail the box together and uh, Finish assembling the hardware and making the other pieces of hardware that I haven't made yet and then we can start uh, installing the insulation and Oh, and then the bottom I've decided just to use a piece of plywood um, that will be the same size as the footprint of the bottom and then we'll use kind of these off cuts as molding around the bottom to uh, cover up the edge of the plywood. So yeah, this project will probably be a couple more videos um, in addition to this one and uh, I hope uh, people find it interesting. Thank you very much for watching.